Ewe is a Kwa language that's spoken in Ghana. It has many properties that differentiate it from English, but we can use the same techniques for figuring out the phrase structure principles in this language. When you're presented with a set of data like you find here in Ewe, the first thing you have to do is figure out which word means which. This is essentially a morphological comparison process. We're going to compare what's going on in the English to what's going on in the Ewe to figure out which word means what. So let's do that first. We're going to start off by noticing that the first three sentences here have the word chief in them. And if we look over here, we can see that the word ua appears in these first three sentences too. So we can conclude then that probably ua is chief. Next, we can look to see um, other cases where we have the same word appearing in multiple sentences. So if we look here, we can see that child appears in sentence one, and child also appears in sentences four through six. In these cases, what they all have in common is this morpheme amu. So let's then uh, conclude that amu means child. Okay, now uh, let's see in the English we've got picture in sentences three and four and in sentence number seven. What do those have in common? They all have in common this ina morpheme. So let's conclude then that ina equals picture. If we look um, at this structure here, the chair, we've got chair appears twice, we've got ele appears twice. So we can conclude that ele equals chair. Now you might also notice that ye appears in both of these sentences, but you'll see that ye appears in other sentences too where there is no word chair. So we will not conclude that ye means chair. It has to be ele. All right, N now let's figure out what's going on with that ye thing. We find ye in sentences one, two, three, five, where it appears twice, six, and seven, and in all those cases, it appears where the word the appears. So, let us then conclude that the word ye means the. Um, now we have to figure out the word for tree that's going to be oofy just by process of elimination. That's the most likely thing that we have there. Now, let's look at the verbs. So we have two verbs in these sentences. We have looked at and we have wanted. If we look at all the sentences that have wanted in them, that's sentences five and six, we have this morpheme vo. So let's conclude then that vo equals... Um, wanted. And if we look at the other sentences, we've got all the ones that have looked at, they all have this ha morpheme, xa. So that probably means looked at. It looks like we have one more morpheme that we haven't glossed, which is ika. And there's only one element in here that doesn't have a gloss, which is woman. So we're going to conclude that Ika equals woman. Okay, so we've done a morphological analysis and we figured out what words mean what. We can now assign these categories. All other things being equal, you can assume that the categories are the same language to language, although that doesn't always work. So it has to be a starting hypothesis, not an ending hypothesis. But in this particular case, I'll tell you that it does work. So chief is a noun in English, child is a noun in English, picture is a noun, chair is a noun, woman is a noun, the is a determiner, tree is a noun, wanted is a verb, and looked at is a verb. 
All right, with that in hand, we can now start answering the questions that have been asked in this particular structure. The first thing is, is there a word meaning at? Or is at a part of the verb? So if we look at the structure, there seems to be no element that's independent that means at. Instead, ha includes looked at. It has the whole thing. So the answer to this is no. We can also ask the question, is there a word meaning a, ah, as in the indefinite determiner? And if you look at these structures like sentence number one, where you look at a ah, child or a ah, tree, you'll notice there's no morpheme that means that. So we're going to say no to that too. We've already done question number C, which is figuring out what each of these words mean. Now we have to figure out the rules. Here's where you can be easily led astray. Because you're going to start with the assumption that the rules look a little bit like English. But in this case, the case of the NP rule, the structure is actually the reverse of what the structure is in English. So in English, the NP rule is noun phrase goes to determiner noun. In Ewe, it appears as if the rule is noun phrase goes to noun determiner. And that determiner has to be optional because we have no word for a. Ah. So sometimes you have noun phrases that just consist of a noun. We don't have any evidence for anything else being inside the noun phrase. For example, we can't tell where prepositional phrases that modify that noun might go. We can't tell where adjective phrases might go. So we're just going to leave it at that for now. Next, let's figure out the VP rule. If we look at the VP rule, when we look at the verb plus the object, so look, for example, at the structure of looked at and then the noun that it takes as a complement, we see we have the order in a way. We have the order ha plus amu, so the verb plus the noun phrase. And we see that also in two. We see it here in number three. We see that all the way through. So we're going to conclude that the rule is verb phrase goes to verb noun phrase. Again, we do not have enough evidence to make any further conclusions about this. Uh, like, for example, when it, where embedded clauses would go or where adverbs go. This is all the data we have, so that's what we make our conclusion. Like English, the subject noun phrase comes first. So here's our subject noun phrase, uwaye. And <clears throat> that means that our TP rule is going to go noun phrase, that's your subject noun phrase, followed by verb phrase. We don't have any evidence in this data set to tell us where the tense node might go. So we're not going to put it in our rule. We now have enough to be able to draw a tree. We're going to draw a tree for sentence number five, which is the child wanted the chair. Uh, I'm going to draw the tree from the top to the bottom. We're going to start with our TP, which has inside of it a noun phrase and a verb phrase, just like English. The subject noun phrase, however, is going to be structured differently. It's going to be structured according to this rule. Notice critically that the de determiner follows the noun. So we're going to put the noun first and then the determiner. It's critical that your rules correspond to the tree. You've got to have the same order in your rule as you have in your tree. And the structures have to be the same too. It is considered respectful to other languages that you put the words from the other language in your tree rather than putting the English words in. So we're going to use amu, which means child, and ye, which means the. So that's the child, but the things are reversed. Okay, next we're going to use the verb phrase rule to construct a verb plus a noun phrase. The verb here is vo, which means wanted. Our noun phrase is structured the same way as the subject noun phrase. The noun comes first, 
Then we have the determiner. And the noun here is ele, and that is our tree for sentence number five.